how concerned which should we be about this variant? I think there's a few points here that are important to consider. One is that, yeah, it is, it is more transmissible and it's pretty clear uh, based on observations from India where it was initially discovered. And then of course, some observations in the United Kingdom and now observations here in Canada, especially here in Ontario. Um, the United Kingdom is a really good place to watch because they have pretty impressive vaccine coverage and they also have this variant to contend with. It's fair to say that it's, uh, you know, it's there, it's expanding, it's being transmitted primarily among unvaccinated populations and in communities where vaccination rates are lower. Uh, we do have some early data from the United Kingdom that demonstrates that the vaccines are still effective, but it's pretty clear that two doses of a vaccine are far more protective than one dose of a vaccine. The early data from the United Kingdom demonstrates that a single dose uh, can provide about 30% uh, effective protection. There's about a 30% effectiveness of a first dose. I'd still be careful with that number. Uh, that number might change with time. And I know there's a lot of people that are hanging off of that 30%. Maybe it's accurate, but oftentimes when we see more data and more experience accumulate, those numbers can change. So I think it's still reasonable to say that it's not good enough, but it's still something and that a second dose would be better. And it looks like, again, this is all preliminary data, but it looks like two doses of uh, the AstraZeneca can provide about a 60-ish percent, uh, it has an effectiveness uh, range of about 60%, and, and the mRNA vaccines, namely Pfizer, may have about a 90%, it is about 90% effective. Those are decent numbers, but I think it's also fair to say that this is early data, and mm -hmm. there's gonna be significant more, um, uh, you know, there's going to be more analysis of this and more accumulation of data. So I'm not married to those numbers. I think we should be, you know, we, we need to factor those numbers into plans because that's the base, best data we have to date. But it's also fair to say that that data can change over time. We should really be looking at what our strategy is to get two doses into people. So currently in Ontario, uh, the strategy is to really protect those who are most vulnerable to this infection. So we've got people on the older end of the spectrum who are prioritized, plus um, people with certain medical conditions are prioritized as well for second doses. But as we move with time, I think we might see expansion of that into communities that are disproportionately impacted by this virus as well. And we'll hopefully see some priority allocation to those communities to help better protect them. Now, what about children? You know, the premier is not opening schools because he says this variant poses uh, a greater risk to children than previous variants. Uh, are you seeing that in the data and how concerned should parents be when children under 12 don't even have an opportunity to be vaccinated? Right, so we know that vaccination is really only for the 12 plus crowd. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen from other settings though, if you really have a good vaccine rollout and you cover uh, older populations and adults, uh, with, with uh, you know, two doses of a vaccine, you can really drive community rates low. And, and for example, uh, Israel is a great example of this. Um, the United States is a very good example of this as well, but in particular Israel, because they didn't vaccinate the, the lower age ranges. But the community rates of COVID-19 just plummeted when you have a significant rollout and significant breadth of the vaccine rollout. So you can essentially protect those younger age groups by vaccinating everybody else and, and really driving community rates to a standstill. Um, having said that, you know, nobody should get COVID-19 and variant or not, we want to ensure that anyone of any age is protected from getting COVID-19. It's not entirely clear how this particular variant manifests the younger age cohort. I think it's premature to start saying that, you know, it has a, a significant negative impact relative to other variants of concern or to other strains of COVID-19 on this cohort. But in the same breath, variant or not, we've got to protect younger populations from getting this virus. I think if we really keep an eye on the metrics like cases, like the community burden of COVID-19, including the cases per day and seven-day averages and percent positivity, if we keep an eye on hospitalizations and ICU capacity, and if we keep an eye on a rapid pace of vaccination, we'll be okay. Those are the three key metrics to follow. And so far, we're doing okay on this front. Do you agree with the Ford yeah. government uh, keeping schools closed due to this Delta variant? 
No, I, I mean, I listen, everyone's going to have their opinion on the matter. And, you know, mine is that we have a massive province. We have a very heterogeneous uh, impact of this virus in different parts of the province. Some parts of the province have zero to few cases per day. Other parts of the province are clearly more heavily impacted. Uh, I think the medical officers of health could have been given autonomy over this decision. They know the areas of the province that they represent best. And they also know not just the safety from a COVID-19 standpoint, but also the needs of the, their various communities, right? And, and I think it's fair to say that uh, the needs of the communities might be, might be quite, quite different. And we, we know how, how awful the impact is of school closures are. It, it's, it's very inequitable. Like it, it completely and disproportionately impacts women. It, 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 it has a profound negative impact on, uh, on women. And it's, uh, it's very, very challenging. And I, obviously that impact is heavier in, in lower uh, socioeconomic neighborhoods. But I would imagine that that impact doesn't stop there. It's, it, it negatively impacts women with children in all neighborhoods. Do we have any evidence that the Delta variant is more deadly to younger people? There's, okay, great question. There's hints and whispers of that in the data, but quite frankly, I think it's a little bit premature to suggest that it is more deadly. It may very well be, but it's not entirely clear just yet. We saw with B117, the variant that was initially discovered in the United Kingdom, now known as the Alpha variant, that indeed that was. It causes more significant illness and, you know, proportionally more people who were infected with that would, would land in hospital. Right. Um, is that the case with this one? Unclear, but it is clear that it is more transmissible.